Okay, so today we're going to talk about um, the two terminal circuit elements, specifically the resistor. So this is lecture four, two terminal circuit elements. specifically the resistor. So recall that we stopped last lecture with, we talked about the laws of interconnection. And the fact that we have four ideal, whoops, let's see, you need to delete this. So for ideal two terminal fundamental circuit elements. So just a bureaucratic note, uh, we mentioned that there will only be four lectures for this chapter, but we realized that we need additional lectures to properly explain the material. So we'll have more than four lectures for this chapter. And most likely for all the chapters, we'll have a bunch of, I mean, more than four lectures, but they will be limited to 20 minutes, uh, around like 20 minutes, 20 to 21 minutes, in order to uh, definitely make sure that you get the fundamental concepts. Speaking about fundamental concepts, so what do we mean by ideal two terminal fundamental circuit elements. By ideal means we do not, uh, we neglect uh, many physical effects. And I emphasize the word many because like we talked about in last lecture, the idea is actually modeling, all right? So for example, we will assume when we have an independent source as we're gonna talk about in this lecture, like a battery, will assume that the battery is ideal uh, under, that is it can put out like, uh, can put out like, let's say if it's a five volt battery, it can put out five volts always, even if you draw like a million amps from it, okay? Uh, that is, we won't go into the, underneath what kind of battery it is, like it could be a lithium ion battery, a lead acid battery, whatever. But, so those are the kind of like the physical effects we'll neglect, but however, when we talk about memristors, for example, we will see that uh, we can't really neglect the physical effects. And that goes into, I mean, this idea of uh, discussing, like we don't care, we don't really bother with what kind of battery it is, gets into the what fundamental is as well. That is the circuit element in question, uh, oops, this is the problem with the tablet, uh, cannot, again, I'll put cannot in quotes, because for memristors, we'll see this is not true, be subdivided further, okay? And two terminal, we'll only discuss two terminal in this chapter, in the next chapter, that is chapter two and beyond, we will discuss multi-terminal circuit elements. That's because for multi-terminal circuit elements, we need uh, the concept of two ports and we'll discuss this in chapter two. But for now, I will always, I will, I'll drop the nomenclature ideal two terminal fundamental and we'll talk about circuit elements, okay? And as we discussed at the end of last lecture, there are four of them, the resistor, the inductor, the capacitor, and the memristor. Now, since resistors are uh, probably, quote unquote, the most familiar circuit element, we'll start a discussion with a resistor, specifically the linear resistor, who's, so let me write down linear resistor. And the symbol for a linear resistor is, I mean, since linear resistors are so, linear resistors, excuse me, are so ubiquitous, they have a special symbol. And basically, this is a symbol. And according to the passive sign convention, notice current is entering the positive direction of voltage drop, the terminal behavior of a linear resistor is given by Ohm's law, which states again that given 
this picture, the voltage developed across a linear resistor is proportional to the current flowing through it. In other words, V equals I times R. This constant R is called the resistance and the unit is ohms given by the symbol capital Omega. Now, uh, something about the resistance uh, in the sense, because we're discussing nonlinear circuits uh, in this uh, book, uh, terms such as resistance cap and uh, capacitance, inductance become amb ambiguous and actually only the terms resistor, capacitor, and inductor should be used. However, as we will see later when we talk about small signal analysis, it makes sense to talk about resistance, capacitance, inductance, and memristance of the associated small signal quantity. Um, but anyway, there's just an aside, there is a little bit more explanation in the book uh, in the form of a footnote, but we'll just use the term resistance anyway, just to make a point. And you can actually take, you can also express I as a function of V, so it's going to be G times V, where G is called as the conductance with the unit of Siemens. Now we can plot this equation one. Um, so equation one can be plotted in either the IV plane or the VI plane. I will, the book plots in both planes, but for now I will specifically focus on the VI plane because by convention, uh, I mean, we, uh, by definition, the x-axis is the independent axis, and by convention, voltage is plotted on the x-axis because usually voltage is the independent variable. You obtain or we obtain current from voltage. For example, you go to your local store and you usually buy batteries, independent sources, sources of voltage. You usually do not get a independent current source. That is, independent current sources are generated from voltage source. So anyway, plotting this equation one in the VI plane, we basically get a straight line with slope equal to notice G because here you have I is G times V or it is one over R times V. Okay. Now, a special, there are two special cases of linear resistors. So two special cases are what is called as the open circuit which is basically R going to infinity. That is the, so if R is going to infinity, so the current is identically uh, zero. Oops. Ah, sorry. Yeah, so open circuit R going to infinity. In other words, yeah, that's what I was getting confused because I plotted this the wrong. Um, so let me just delete this because that's incorrect. Because huh. that is, I, I mean, whoops, that's, this is the problem with these tablets. Uh, so G going to zero, okay. In other words, the current flowing through an open circuit is zero irrespective of the voltage across the um, resistor. So that's the symbol for an open circuit. So I equals zero, V can be anything. And the dual of this is the so-called short circuit where the resistance goes to zero. Okay. So in other words, you have the conductance going to infinity and the symbol, so the voltage is zero for all values of current, okay? And it's easy to draw a picture, a circuit picture. So there's the short circuit, okay? So I, can be any real number, but the voltage is definitely zero, okay? So I just mentioned the word uh, dual, 
That means if you for basically if you plot the for example the short circuit in the IV plane, this is the slope is resistance. So this goes to zero. You can notice that these are the same. That is the graph of the open circuit in the VI plane is the same as the graph of the short circuit in the IV plane. So these are called, so this is the idea behind duality. It's an important idea and we'll encounter this throughout the book. Okay. These are two special cases of linear resistors. So now uh, we can obviously get other expressions for a linear resistor. That is the power associated the pass sign convention is, I mean, power is V times I, but I is equal to VR. So, uh, or V equals IR. I'm sorry. I can't believe I said that. In other words, you can say, for example, power is I squared R. And I highlighted, I boxed this because in other words, the power delivered to a linear resistor is always non-negative. It's important if R is greater than or equal to zero. That is, uh, passive resistors always absorb energy from the remainder of the circuit. Now you might ask, what are we going to do? I mean, when do we get negative R? That is, um, so in other words, if R is negative, we will call it an active resistor. Means the resistor is active and these are, these will turn out to be important components for example, in oscillators, as we will encounter later in the book. So although you're, you're probably familiar with the linear passive resistor, linear active resistors are perhaps new to some of you. Again, they're one of the basic circuit elements in the design of negative resistance oscillators. And we'll show how to synthesize piecewise linear negative resistors. So we will synthesize PWL, and there's an important acronym piecewise linear and we'll can counter piecewise linearity later in this lecture actually so we'll synthesize piecewise linear negative resistors using operational amplifiers or op amps in chapter 2 okay uh and again, so we've just uh, I mentioned active resistors. So now let's move on and actually talk about nonlinear resistors. So in keeping up with the theme of this book, we'll only discuss linear resistors as special cases of nonlinear resistors whose symbol is given like so. I plus or minus V. So in other words, a uh, nonlinear resistor, uh, I mean, it's the symbol is in the book. We'll just uh, say that a nonlinear resistor satisfies a relation between V and I. Now, we note that this um, symbol here is actually as asymmetrical, so this N subscript R. So we can avoid actually drawing the polarity signs besides the symbol as long as we agree that the darkened edge is the negative terminal, point number one, and point number two is current or the appropriate variable, let's say charge, enters the positive or the non-darkened terminal. So in other words, uh, we won't, we will usually not specify the polarities unless absolutely necessary. Now, perhaps the most popular nonlinear resistor model is the PN junction diode. This element is so important that it has its own special symbol, like so, I plus or minus V. And an ex a model for the PN junction diode, one model is given by, what is this 
called as this exponential function. In other words, if you plot the IV characteristics of the P and junction diode in the VI plane, it approximately looks something like this. It goes up there. It's plotted better in the book, but basically, uh, the diode conducts when, or it acts like a short circuit when the voltage across the diode is positive and it actually turns off like this point here, uh, negative IS, the saturation current here is extremely small. But we'll talk more about uh, diodes throughout the book. But one of the things is looking at this equation here and the graph, we see that given any voltage, we can the current I is uniquely specified. This such nonlinear resistors are called voltage controlled nonlinear resistors. By contrast, when the voltage is a single valued function of the current, we have a current controlled nonlinear resistor. And there are other uh, terminologies such as bilateral resistors which are discussed in the book. And as usual, uh, you should be reading through the appropriate section in the book. Now, another important point is that this equation, although is a good model for the diode at low frequencies, we need to use additional circuit elements uh, like capacitors, inductors, and linear resistors to model the device at uh, different conditions, for example, at higher frequencies. A very important physical property of the diode, namely the charge storage effect in the base, is modeled by memristors. And we'll discuss memristors later, later excuse me, in this chapter. Now, I want to get into the idea behind piecewise linear modeling. of resistors in the remaining time. And I actually want to do this by solving a problem. Okay, So for example, suppose I'm given a piecewise linear IV characteristic like so. So there's a particular IV characteristic and again, I mentioned that we will learn how to synthesize these piecewise linear characteristics in chapter two. But for now, let's say the slope here is M0, the slope here is M1, and the slope here is M2. Uh, let me delete this. Mm, actually, let me leave it in there. Let's say this point is E1, the break point so-called, and this is E2, this is 0. Obviously, E1 is negative. There is a very, very nice general formula for uh, these piecewise linear resistors. We'll assume that there are no discontinuities. Now, there is even a general expression if there are discontinuities in the resistor, the piecewise linear model. And again, it's discussed in the book. The point, again, of doing this piecewise linear modeling is, as we will see in chapter two, such resistors can be easily synthesized using op amps. But anyway, um, so the general expression is I is A0 plus A1V plus sigma K going from 1 to N of BK, absolute value of V minus EK, where E1 is less than E2 is dot 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 less than EN. And so these, uh, so these are the so-called breakpoint voltages.
and a zero is i of zero minus sigma k going from one to n b sub k absolute value of e sub k a one is one half m zero plus m n and b k is one half m k minus m k minus one again uh, the labeling is as follows. Here is M0, M1, M2. So you start from the left, go to the right. So in this case, let's see actually what we get. I know I'm running out of time. We are going over, but let's just look at this example and see what we get for this particular problem. So in our case, A0 is going to be I0 minus sigma k going from 1 to 2, right? So in other words, we have two breakpoint voltages, our n of bk, absolute value of ek. So this implies our a0 is minus b1 e1 minus b2 e2 because i0 is 0. And usually, We will assume that E1 equals E2 equals BP. So that is these two voltages are equal in magnitude. Therefore, our A0 we will get is minus B1 BP minus B2 BP. Let's box that, correct? And then I'll solve this here. Our A1 is 1 half M0 plus MN is going to be M2. And let us assume from this picture that M0 equals M2 equals M. I mean, I've drawn it in such a way, yes, that the slopes here are equal. Therefore, our A1 is going to be 1 half of 2M, which implies our A1 is going to be M. Okay. Now, what are our B1s and B2 going to be like? So B1 is going to be 1 half M1 minus M0, correct? And B2 is going to be 1 half M2 minus M1. But I have assumed that M0 and M2 are the same, correct? So in other words, you will get, uh, this implies that B1 equals 1 half M1 minus M, and B2 is 1 half M minus M1, which implies B2 is negative B1. Let's call this B, correct? So, and then let's define B as 1 half M1 minus M, okay? Hence, what we have, therefore, our A0 is minus B1 minus B2E2. But in other words, your A0 now is minus BE, BP, correct, uh, plus B, BP, because these are negatives of each other. In other words, our A0 is 0. Okay. So my point again is, sorry, I went a little bit like four minutes over. My point again is this piecewise linear model has a very elegant expression in terms of absolute values. Our A0 is 0. Our, again, our A0 is 0. Our A1 is M which is interestingly the outer slopes. Therefore, what we get is basically M times V plus one half uh, So let's just write it out. Uh, let's see, let's just write this out cleanly because it's gotta be careful of the signs. So it's going to be B1 
absolute value of V minus minus BP plus BP plus B2, absolute value of, oops, this is not B1 here. V plus BP, absolute value of V minus BP. So in other words, you get MV plus B times absolute value of B plus BP minus absolute value of V minus BP. In other words, again, you have this very elegant expression, uh, one half M1 minus M, um, absolute value of V plus BP minus absolute value of V minus BP, okay? Yeah, and you can actually figure out that this uh, is actually equal to this curve, but I leave that as an exercise, or we leave that as an exercise. Again, sorry we went over almost six minutes, but it is very important that you understand this expression. And as usual, if you have any questions, uh, please post on the online forums or even in the comments uh, section of this video. On YouTube and that's about it for uh, now for resistors we'll have much more to say about resistors multi-terminal nonlinear resistors throughout the book uh, so next time where we will start out with is actually uh, inductors and capacitors there is um, again much more information in the chapter in the particular section on the chapter on resistors, which we encourage you to read, including independent and dependent source modeling using resistors. But again, we'll see you next time where we will start with inductors and capacitors, and hopefully we won't go over the 20 minutes. All right, see you next time.